Okay, so this tutorial will be about the turn manager, which manages the order in which minions uh, and other entities uh, that are in an initiative order act. Uh, so by default, you'll see that we start by the card player being activated, drawing his hand. Uh, then you have the, uh, the enemy minions activate, and then you will have the, uh, the heroes activating if they have any sort of status that needs activation. Currently it does not, so what will happen is that this minion will activate, then this one will activate, but he has nothing to do, so we just go straight back to drawing uh, our hand. Uh, but how is this uh, turn order set up and organized, and how can you modify it? And that's what we're going to look at in this tutorial. So you will find the turn manager under blueprints and core, and here you have BP turn manager RLDB, and we'll open this one. Uh, so there is quite a bit of stuff happening here. Uh, I won't cover all of it in detail, but I will describe, you know, generally how this works. Uh, and the responsibilities of the turn manager is really to have a list of which actors are to be activated, to find the appropriate uh, minion or actor to activate in initiative, um, and then to handling uh, ending and starting of new turns. Also, uh, turn manager is uh, responsible for ending the game uh, if uh, a win condition is met. So those are the different responsibilities of uh, the turn manager. Now for this video, I will assume that you have seen my video on the event system, the event dispatcher system, because the turn manager makes heavy use of that. And we'll be describing that immediately. Uh, as you see at begin play, the turn manager is subscribing and is bound to uh, several different events. So it cares about when a target is spawned, this is like a minion is spawned, uh, it, and when a turn ends, when a minion dies, and when a win, con a win game condition uh, is called as an event. Uh, so all of these. And after binding to this, the turn manager really is waiting for target spawned uh, to happen. Uh, so it is waiting for any minions to be spawned in the game. And when they do, we can go here down to the dispatcher events. We'll see that when a target is spawned, it checks that this is an actor. And then it adds this actor to initiative, which is uh, to an array where it keeps all of the actors uh, that can be activated. Um, and as soon as it has, uh, you know, at least one uh, such actor has been added to initiative, um, it will then uh, wait a tick just to make sure uh, not, uh, no more minions are spawned and then it will start the first turn. Um, at which point it will call the game start event, uh, which if you saw my tutorial on statuses, I used that to uh, do some uh, start of game events. And then we start a new round. And when starting a new round, we keep track of which round it is. That's not used for anything by default, but it can be used uh, for something if you needed to. And then we start the turn of the next object. So the next object, really the next actor in, in initiative. Um, and as long as combat is not over, uh, then we try to find the remaining actor with the highest initiative. And this is the actor that we want to activate. So how do we determine which actor has the highest initiative. And by remaining, we mean uh, an actor who has not already used its turn. Um, and it does this by looping through all of the actors remaining in this round, getting their initiative, and finding the one with the highest initiative of those that remain. Um, you might think, if you care about optimization and things like that, why am I not simply keeping an ordered list and then going one step down along that list each time instead of checking all of the actors? and their initiative. And this is uh, because this is a more flexible system if you are somehow you know, changing the initiative uh, of uh, minions dynamically or some other things are shaking up the turn order as you go. Then this sort of system is simpler to work with. And you're not really, it's not that big of a loop, uh, so it won't have a performance impact. But that's why I'm doing it in this might seem somewhat awkward way, uh, but it is practical to do it like this. Uh, so we're getting the initiative of all of these actors, and you can see that I'm using an interface function for this, uh, which is a very small interface because it just has a single interface uh, function, and this is implement implemented by 
several actors. Uh, so the uh, or not that many really the card player and the minions. Um, and we can find the minion here. Uh, let's see, BP minion. Uh, and we can find in the interface events here, uh, we can find uh, get initiative. Let's see, I'll have to search for it because apparently I'm blind. There it is. Um, and we can. Oh, we're already there. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I can't open it. So here, so each. Uh, actor that implements this uh, this interface uh, can choose whatever way they want to return uh, their initiative value. And the way the minion does this at, is that it looks at its initiative status um, and sees that it, this value. And it also checks if the monster track that it is currently on, uh, the minion track, it does have any initiative modifier. So we should look at the tracks here because these are the actors that minions are added to. Um, I can cover these briefly. So these are responsible for keeping the minions uh, on an ordered row here. Uh, so we have you know the front and back, and it has functions for accessing uh, minions at specific points here. Uh, but also, the monster track has. Uh, this get initiative from track function uh, where it has its own initiative modifier and it also does an adjustment uh, based on the order uh, at which the minion is standing on the track. So what this means is that any minion that is on this track, which is the enemy track, you see that they have an initiative modifier of 200. So all of, all of the minions here will have an initiative that is 200 higher than their base initiative. Um, and also for each index um, that they are placed, they will get one more initiative. So the minion in front will have the highest initiative and then lower initiative behind. You will see that this for the heroes here has an initiative modifier of 100. Uh, so which means that these minions will act after these minions. Um, also by default, all of the various minions have initiative values of uh, zero, so they don't modify this themselves. So the initiative order by default is entirely determined by which track these monsters are standing on. Uh, and you don't need to use tracks uh, really for it. in this toolkit. You can have you know the monster standing freely around and you can define their initiative in some other way or define their, their initiative in um, like in their data or somewhere else. And, and the turn manager will use this um, to get their initiative and sort them uh, appropriately. That is up to you how, uh, how you choose to do. And actually, let's demonstrate that for this turn manager tutorial uh, to make it clearer how this works. Um, so first, let's uh, add some minions to the game instance so we can make this turn order a lot clearer. Uh, so let's go to the game instance and the current encounter and we have a troll here and we'll add another troll and we'll paste that. So now we have two of those and then we'll also modify our in data our hero so that he starts being poisoned so that we can clearly see when his turn is activated. Just like a poison value of five and if I now hit play we'll see the defaults. We start by drawing. Uh, drawing our hand, then these will be activated, the front one first, then the back one, and then our hero gets its poison damage and we draw our hand. So this is working in the expected order. Uh, but we can change this so we can switch this up so that, uh, well, we can go to the hero track here and put this at a higher initiative modifier uh, than the one for the monsters. And now you will see that the poison will trigger before these abilities. So there's the poison, and now we get these abilities. So we've switched up the order by doing it like this. Uh, we can also like set both of these initiative modifiers to zero. And then we can also go into EP minion, and uh, yeah, actually, yeah, or we can go into the minion track and say that we don't want to care about the position, actually, we're just getting the initiative order of the track directly and we don't care about where it is in the position. Uh, so currently 
uh, all of them have the same initiative, so they will really be activated in the order in which they were spawned in the game. Um, but we can make this more predictable by saying, yeah, for the hero, we want this guy to be activated uh, last, or yeah, at initiative 50, say. And the monsters, the trolls, we want these to be at initiative 20. And this will actually get us the same result as we had the last time, since we have two trolls. So let's make a different kind of minion for this encounter. So the second minion will make this guy a spider. And for the spider in minions monsters, we'll set the initiative to like 400. And now we will have the hand activating first, then the spider, then this uh, hero, and then the troll. As you'll see, the spider attacks, then the hero takes poison damage, then the troll activates and then we draw our hand. Uh, so one piece of the puzzle is remaining, I guess, um, like how does the card player know that he is to activate first? And we can find that out by looking at our uh, card player and finding the initiative component here. You see that it's set to a thousand. Uh, so if we set this to uh, like a hundred, it will activate after the spider. So if we hit play now, we'll see that the spider will activate first, then we draw our hand, then we take poison damage, and then the troll, and then the spider again at the start of the next turn. Um, so this is how you can uh, manipulate uh, the order in which uh, minions, uh, the card player, etc. are activated. Uh, before ending this video though, uh, we'll look a bit more on how this actually works in the code. So if we go to the turn manager here, uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll see that when we are starting the next object's turn, which we saw that happened when we started a new round, right, which happened at the beginning of the game, uh, and the game is not over, then we get the remaining actor with highest initiative, which we have just discussed. And if we successfully find such an actor, if we don't, I mean, that means that we no longer have any actors to activate, and then we start a new round, which uh, again, uh, sets all of the uh, valid actors back into initiative uh, so that they can be activated again. But if we do still have an actor that has not been activated this turn, we set it as the active actor and then we call this event, uh, which is uh, the turn start event. And you can see that we call this in the dispatcher hub component of that actor. Uh, so this, if you uh, watch my video on status effect, you can see how we use that for creating the enraged status, where we are specifically listening for the turn start event um, for uh, the dispatcher hub that is owned by that particular minion. So that's what we're doing here. But we, you can see that we've also checked this also called global. So that means that we're calling this event in the in the specific dispatcher hub of the minion, but we're also calling it in the global dispatcher hub. And what this leads to really is uh, the various components on, or the various statuses on the minion might have events that are tied to turn start. And that's actually what happens with these attack patterns uh, that the minions are doing. Uh, I recommend seeing my tutorial on creating minions uh, for seeing how attack patterns work. Uh, but the attack pattern is a type of status which we can find in the Blueprints statuses BP attack pattern. And this is a status that all the AI minions have. Uh, and you can see that it is bound uh, to turn start on the dispatcher hub of that particular minion. And turn start uh, causes uh, this minion to use an ability uh, or a card, uh, which might be attacking a player minion or something like that. So. This is what really happens when the turn manager uh, says turn start. It calls turn start and then it, uh, if any of the statuses on the minion are subscribing to this, they do their thing. Uh, and then you will also see that on the minion itself, it is also, let's see, um, if I can find it. Yeah, where's the bind? Yeah, binding here, 
uh, so we are binding the turn start event um, to this uh, this minion as well so when turn start is called for this minion it waits one tick and then it calls end turn so this you now allows all of the statuses etc to resolve their effects uh, and then we call end turn and if you recall the turn manager is also listening for the end turn event uh, so when this is called, then it tries to end the turn. Uh, it does some checks to make sure that the minion that is calling the end turn event is actually the active actor, um, at which point it removes this actor from the ones that are in initiative. And then we start the next object turn. And again, we go back and we try to find remaining actors in, in initiative, find the one with the highest initiative, and continue. Uh, so to reiterate uh, this or explain how it is uh, so the way that the turn manager uh, activates um, a minion or anything else else is that it really just tells the dispatcher hub of that minion or that actor that hey it's your turn and then it just waits for that actor to call the end turn event at which point it returns so whatever actor is being activated by the turn manager is itself responsible for telling the turn manager when it's done this allows for you know flexible design of uh, any sort of actor you might want to add uh, in initiative uh, so that really explains uh, the basics of how this turn manager works there's one thing left though which is this uh, end game stuff that you can see that we're also subscribing to the uh, to de the death event specifically so when a minion is killed uh, really when its health status is reduced to zero it calls the death event um, and when a uh, a minion dies this um, the turn manager checks if combat should end now uh, and it does this by checking are there any minions remaining that have the hero tag if there are not then we want to run our game over stuff if there are any heroes remaining then we want to check okay are there any enemies remaining and if not uh, then we want to execute all the combat victory stuff which and what that does really is you know uh, store uh, all the stuff in the instance that has changed now what is the current health of the hero uh, we grant any rewards that are from this encounter before returning uh, to the node map um, yeah, so that's uh, like briefly covered how uh, this end game uh, code works. So also through the events here, and you can look at the code here um, if you want to see it more detailed. And um, and so there are, there are you know a lot of more fiddly things happening within this, but that's the the broad overview of how this works. But uh, if there are any parts of this that are confusing to you, just feel free to ask in my uh, on my Discord or in the support thread and I'll do my best to explain it uh, better there if you have any remaining questions. Uh, so, but I hope this helped understand uh, quite a lot better how the turn system and the turn manager works in this toolkit.